And the son said, of man? Son of man. That was one of the titles he was given. So he's a son, son of man. Listen to me. I'm trying to understand the title. Are you I'm not trying to listen? I, I want to understand as well. <laughs> Is he the son of man or son of God? We'll be like, no. You know, it's nothing wrong with it. He identifies, she identifies as a woman today. All right. Now, she wants to box as a woman. Right? Now, those same people, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Right? Well, why not? Right? Let, let, let's imagine, again, in case Mike Tyson watches this, no offense, brother. But let's imagine if Mike Tyson decides tomorrow, you know what? I'm going to self-identify as a woman. Right? And I'm going to box the best woman boxer that's out there, Mike Tyson. Right? You want to put him in the ring with a woman? I, I'm, I'm a dude and I don't want to be in the ring with Mike Tyson, right? I mean, if you're going to make a point, then I'd love to discuss it a little no, bit. If you're just going to make... time. Okay, well then come well, back when you, you got said, time. Uh -huh. Where does it say that? I'm going to sure, tell sure. you. But, but there's a quick question. Is this Bible... Was this don't written in the time of... Don't tell me it's Why not? Up. I'm going to it tell is. you. You asked me to show you. I know, but I'm saying is what you're showing is corrupted, so how can it be an evidence? It doesn't matter what it says then, does it? It doesn't. I'm... Well, I'm no, 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 listen, listen, listen. Let I'm going to read it to you. Go ahead, go ahead, read it to me. Okay. When Jesus came into the regi region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And the they Son said, of Man? Son of Man. That was one of the titles he was given. So he's the Son Come, of Man. Listen to me. I'm trying to understand the title. Are you I'm not trying to listen? I, I want to understand as well. Is he the son of man or the son of God? That was a pastor, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you that are like, who is a, a Christian pastor? I wanna, I wanna see the rest. Of, is there any more to that? Is there any? No, this was a shorts, bro. It's definitely from like a debate that he had with a Christian preacher. But Subhanallah, bro, like you're defending Christianity, you're defending a religion that that you're 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 not just you know someone that is a follower. You are a leader in the church, in the Christian community, for the youth, for the adult, for the believers of your religion. And when you're faced with a question from a book that you're defending, that was one of the names he was given. Okay, is he the son of God or the son? Bro, that guy knew that guy knew the cognitive dissonance was too real for him to just stay there and take it. Yeah. They get very emotional. They either get like uh just extra they and then they get aggressive they start like saying all this extra stuff bro stuck for a lot yeah mm -hmm. like if you if you're experiencing something like that that should kind of let you know like hey maybe maybe this is not the truth yeah yeah or at the very least at the very least maybe you just don't know enough Maybe you just don't have the information. At least be humble enough to be like, you know what? Let me go research and I'll, I'll get back to you. And then after that, exactly. if you can't find the answer, then okay, then you can start freaking out when you don't find the answer. But in the moment, bro, like, you know, we're, we're fallible human beings. I think uh, just to be fair, and the reason this is the reason I asked if there's more to it, because I do want to see what led up to that point in that moment. Because son of man is supposed to be a term in Christian that's supposed to be like not, not divine, but really exalted. And it's mentioned in the Old Testament. So that's why when he was reading Son of Man, to him, he read it as like someone who's ama amazing, essentially, someone who's exalted. Um, but to us, it's like Son of Man. It's like, if you're a son of a man, you're not son of God. Um, <laughs> and that's what brother, uh, Sheikh Uthman, forgive me. That's what Sheikh Uthman was saying. Uh, and I guess he just, I don't know, didn't want to explain himself and walked away. But uh, yeah, I think he did see where he was going at the end. Subhanallah, bro. The more videos I see of Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq, I'm not on it as much as I was before, but um, before when I would watch all these videos, like the amount of just just control he had of the situation simultaneously, you know, and I know this was a point that Anha brought up on the episode that we did with Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq. If you guys didn't catch that, check that out. But Anha was literally asking like, um, how, do you, how do you maintain that? Because it's not easy. It looks easier than it is. Um, or it look, sorry, it looks, it looks, it, yeah, it looks much easier than it really is because when you look at it, it's like, okay, whatever, he's just having a debate. But knowing all the information and then holding frame and also being able to refute these things that these, some of these idiots, not all of them, but some are generally idiots, bro, like David Wood that keeps showing up, knowing what to say, knowing what the perfect answer is, which is the real answer, giving it, articulating it, it's, bro, it's really hard, bro. A lot of people, it's easy to like be keyboard warriors and all these things, but when you're in that situation, bro, where there's that pressure, but you don't submit to the pressure, you instead just you don't fold, 
bro. It's hard. Trust me, it's really hard, bro. And to be doing that every single Sunday, bro, after working a full-time job, 60, 70, 80 hours a week, and you still show up here Sunday just to refute these people and, and, and to do da'wah, bro. May Allah bless him. Yeah. Allahumma amin. Allahumma amin. Uh, he's actually someone I've, I've taken great inspiration from uh, recently. Ever since we, you know, we did the episode with him and I saw a few videos before that of him. I've taken great inspiration from him. And if, if anyone, like, sees my lives, they'll see that they're, they're, you can literally identify things that I say or things that I, I mention or ways that I behave that you can link to him. And if you can link it, it's probably because it came from him. I basically, I took that from him. But it's not just holding frame. It's, I mean, all of it's identified as holding frame, but it's keeping control of the conversation. And it's not just supposed to be in a dominant way. It's supposed to be in the sense where you don't let them veer off track. You don't let them run away. You don't let them escape. You don't let them be disrespectful. And I, bro, Wallah al there is this one person. He was, he was actually a very nice guy. But when he was on the live, because I invite you know Christians and atheists up to discuss and debate, from the very get go, he was very disrespectful. But I remembered, you know, the way Sheikh Uthman, may Allah bless him, deals with these people. He's just firm. He's just mm -hmm. like, you know, you're not going to come on here. Like this is my, it's what I turned it into. You're not going to come on here and disrespect people. You're going to watch your mouth. They're going to kick you off. If you want to say something, you can articulate it, you know, respectfully. We're going to have this discussion. You're going to speak. I'm going to speak. If not, I'm going to kick you off. You can leave. Immediately, they, they, not, they don't do it out of like submissiveness. They do it out of like respect. And they start being kind to me after that. And that's something mm -hmm. I've witnessed time and time again. So it's, it's so sad. It shouldn't be this way. But it is. The fact that you let people step on you uh, entails them stepping on you more. And if you stop it, then they will respect you and they will honor you. And in turn, they will honor your beliefs and your religion. I don't let anyone get on there and start saying, uh, F this, F that, Islam is this, Islam is that, Muhammad is this, alayhi salatu wasalam. I kick them off instantly. And I make sure they know, and for the benefit of everyone out there, I make sure mm -hmm. they know that their one-liners, they don't matter. We don't give a damn about your one-liners, your Jesus loves you, your Jesus is God, your, your Islam is false, you worship a stone. Bro, it's like, it's like spitting at the moon. Does the moon, does this change the moon? Does the moon care? Does the moon turn away from you? Does the moon cry? Nobody cares, bro, about your one-liners. And this is what he faces every day. People, like, basically yelling, screaming, shouting, one-liner after one-liner mm. one after one-liner. It's like he doesn't let it face him. And I think that's, that's, that's the most beautiful part about his dawah, that he doesn't let anything face him. He sticks to the truth. He stays respectful. He stands his ground. And he has honor like a Muslim should. And I think that's beautiful, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, bro. Anyone watching that does dawah, I want you to take it a step further. Show up in some some genuine Muslim apparel, bro. Don't be showing up to these dawah boots, you know, wearing whatever, just a normal shirt, looking like like the average non-Muslim. You know what I mean? I want you to show up in, in the Muslim attire, kind of like Sheikh Uthman does. Because when people see you in a thobe or wearing an in, in authentic, you know, Islamic wear, a Muslim wear, they, they look at you and, and automatically they might have these preconceived judgments like, oh, he probably doesn't know English. You know, or oh, he probably doesn't know all these cosmological arguments or academic rational arguments and, and he doesn't know atheism well and Christianity well. So then when you open their mouth, it's almost like, bruh, like they're not ready for that. You know what I mean? Because I see that in a lot of people that they might look at you if you're just dressed like them and they might be like, oh, OK, this guy probably, you know, knows how to talk and he can he can try to convince me and whatever. But they almost undermine people. And, and a lot of people that that they have these preconceived prior judgments. They'll do that, bro. They'll undermine you just on what you're wearing. They're like, oh, he probably doesn't even know English, bro. And then when you open their mouth, they're like, bro, what? Like, you don't sound foreign. And on top of that, you know about science and you know all these things and you're still Muslim? What? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's very refreshing, subhanAllah. 100%. 100%. And I guess it also goes back to, um, to, to maintaining your honor. Because if you see that as like, mm -hmm. You're, you're proud to be a Muslim. You're not, you're not afraid to show it. I think they would also respect that too. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a Muslim who's more willing to assimilate out of fear of disassociating from, from you know, the non-Muslims and everything, there, it shows uh, some kind of a fragile aspect of their iman, a fragile aspect of their, their you know, conviction in Islam, or at least in their honor in being a Muslim, if they're too afraid to go out in a thobe. If mm -hmm. And like, fearing for your life is one thing. That's different. Yeah. But if, if you're scared to be looked at weird, like, oh, what a weirdo wearing a thobe, it's like, you know, come, come say it to my face. That's how it should yeah. be. Come say it to my face, see if I care. We, we ain't talking about that. You're right, bro, because I was watching a movie yesterday, and it's about Netflix and Hollywood has not failed us. 
tilted it on this. They they can't fail to just take Muslim, you know, Muslims and make them look like they're refugees or they're they're fleeing from this, you know, this crisis back home and and you know, Palestine or or Jordan or any of these. And I've seen so many, bro. And when they're here, it's like you know, they're not wearing hijab and they'll show all this. And yesterday I was watching movies, subhanAllah, and the the chick was literally saying that, oh, you know, I had to come here and, and flee. And when I came here, uh, and and the guy was like, oh, you you don't you look you don't look foreign whatsoever. You don't look Palestinian. She's like, yeah, when you're Arab, uh, it, it helps to fit in. It helps to look like the Americans, you know, so they don't they don't attack you. And like, bro, come on, bro. Like, yeah, I get it, bro. Some people genuinely have that that concern, you know, that they're going to get, you know, jumped or someone's going to take their hijab off. We're not talking about that, you know. So if you, you know, people that, sisters that don't want to wear hijab, you know, because they're like, oh, if I wear it, then, you know, okay, listen, if you don't wear a hijab, there's a difference between dressing modestly and just going outside with no clothes on. I hate to say it, but I'm saying it as it is. So a lot of sisters that are doing that and they're using that as an excuse, saying that, oh, I don't want to wear a hijab or I don't want to, or men, I don't want to grow my beard. If I grow my beard, you know, they're going to know. Bro, come on now. Like, who are you trying to fool? Yeah. yeah. They can't fool Allah. They only fool themselves at the end of the day. <sighs> I don't know, man. You're gonna Why aren't you absorbing. growing your beard out? Hmm? Why aren't you growing your beard out, Fahed? You, you want to know the truth, bro. My beard right now is longer than it's been in probably months right now. MashaAllah. Wallahi. I haven't trimmed it, bro. Let me see. How long? MashaAllah. I would say maybe an inch. How long would you say? An inch? Mm-hmm. I'm that. Yeah, bro. I didn't even trim it, bro. I just, you know, lined it up, shaped it up, but that's it, bro. And I see myself growing it because now we know the truth, bro. We know we got to grow our beards out and and we're not supposed to, you know, trim them and, and keep them short and all that. So, may Allah bless us for our, our struggles, bro. Allahumma amin. Amin. People, bro, people don't realize, too, what a blessing a beard is for a man. Like, so, we've already spoken about this. Okay, I, I, I'll elaborate, all right? The beard alters your facial structure. So, it can make you look just way better. All right, that's number one. That's... That's a blessing. That's baraka. Number two is that with a beard, it, it's such low maintenance. Like one, once you start letting it grow out, the only real maintenance you have is maybe cutting it what once a month, or if you want to go even longer without cutting, it, you can go longer. Um, but edging it up, like, like yeah, you can edge it up if you want to clean it up. But wallahi, like you don't have to edge it up. You could spend like two to three weeks, and even if you have like the hair growing in on the sides and on the bottom, because it's long, it, it still looks good. Yeah. And as long as like you keep your head hair clean, you know, like you you get haircuts and stuff like that. Even if you got like hair on the your cheeks or on the the bottom right here, like it it looks good. So it's so low maintenance compared to having to shave every single day. Or having to get the trimmer and then trim it every few days and then try to edge it up and line it up. Because mm-hmm. when you have a shorter beard, you have to line it up every single time. Because when the cheeks start growing in and the bottom starts growing in, it just it doesn't look right. It, it looks dirty. Mm-hmm. With the longer beard, it doesn't look dirty. It actually, it, it just flows with it. Hmm. I don't know, bro. A lot of people are like, bro, why are you guys talking about this? So, I don't know, because it's from a video that Sheikh Uthman ibn Farouk made. May Allah bless him that we learned that, you know, we can't be cutting our beards. And for people that don't know, search that up. Um, it's a video by Sheikh Uthman called, I think, Rulings on the Beard and Trimming the Beard and Mustache and all that. Very good video, bro. Yeah, but yeah like if you guys it. made it this far, comment down below, hashtag, don't be afraid. All right, yeah. so don't be afraid of confrontation, debates, being who you are, being Muslim, and may Allah protect us from that. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Honor Allah, honor the religion of Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor you. Remember that. Never be afraid of the non-Muslims. and Never be afraid to show that you are Muslim. What are they going to do at the end of the day? Not like you? Bro, what if Allah hates them? Who gives a damn about them, honestly? Be a Muslim. And we care about them. We, we want to guide them, inshallah. But be a Muslim. Be authentically Muslim. Don't be scared. And remember the hadith of the Prophet, والسلام, which we hear all the time, where he said that Islam started as something strange. It will return to being strange. So glad tidying to the strangers. So if you don't want to be a stranger, then you don't want to be from the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma amin, bro. 
All right. طيب. And with that being said, اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا أذاب النار. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.